Hey guys, today I've got a fun tutorial for you and I will show you and train you how to be able to float light as the air just like this picture. All right guys, so there is a little bit of uh, photo wizardry magic going on here because uh, this picture is actually uh, a composite uh, done in Photoshop. So what you're gonna need to be able to do this is Photoshop or something that will allow you to use uh, layer masking. So if whatever program you're using allows you to do layer masking, you too will be able to do this. So let's take a look at uh, how to do this. First of all, you need to be able to shoot this on a tripod. You don't need a fancy camera. It doesn't have to be anything special, uh, but you do need a tripod. And uh, unless you have help, uh, which I, when I shot this picture today, um, I didn't have anybody to help me with, so I used a, a wireless remote. But you don't really need that if you have somebody else at the camera to actually just press the shutter button. So um, let me show you how I did it. First of all, it takes two pictures. That's it. You just need to take two pictures on the tripod, and the tripod can't move. The first picture you're going to take is of the background. All right. So this is the background just taken with um, with with the tripod and I'm standing behind the camera and I just take the background picture. The second picture I take, and this is rather mundane, is this picture. So it's me uh, on a stool. And you'll notice that, um, you know, it's just a normal everyday picture. You'll also, very observant people, will also notice that over here on the uh, right hand side, there is a, um, a remote, it's a remote control, because what I did was in order to take a picture of myself, and I didn't want to have the remote in my hand, uh, what I did was I um, s uh, triggered the, the, the timer with a wireless remote. I knew I had about 10 seconds, and so what I did was I just tossed the uh, little wireless remote over there onto the, onto the uh, sofa, onto the couch, um, not realizing it was still gonna be in the picture. But actually today, um, I'm gonna redo my work and show you how it's, it's, it's pretty easy to remove elements um, if you have two pictures that are, are almost identical except for what you want to change. So here's how you do it. And uh, over here on the right hand side, I'm, I'm going to actually move this layer which I had worked on earlier to the bottom. So these are really the only two um, images I'm going to work with. In fact, I could, um, let me move this layer to, down to the bottom. So we'll just pretend like these two layers don't exist. And these layers here are the ones we're going to work on. Okay, so you have um, one layer, which is the background layer, the layer one, and that one is with with, um, with without me. And then this layer is the, the layer that's on top. In order to get rid of the stool, and then this, this time we're also gonna get rid of uh, that little remote. In order to do that, you need to, on the uh, upper layer, put what uh, what's known as a layer mask. So I'm gonna put a layer mask on there. And here's how a layer mask works. Um, anything that is white, it's, it's not showing what's underneath. But if you paint black on a layer mask, it's like punching a hole through, through this layer so you can see what's underneath. So if I were to take a, uh, a pen tool here, I'm gonna increase the size. So this pen tool here, and if I were to paint, and over here you gotta make sure that your, uh, your foreground color is black because you wanna paint black on here. In fact, one way to erase it is to um, switch it so that your foreground color now is white and then when you paint back on here, it will cover over that black with white once again and sort of like covering over that hole. But let's start off with black. Okay, and I'm gonna actually use my uh, Wacom pen tool here. And I'm going to start painting um, at the bottom over here, but you know what, to, to bring it up a little bit closer, I'm gonna make this image larger like that, and then I'm going to uh, move to where I what I need to change. So I need to change that stool right there, okay? So I'm gonna start working on that stool, and I'm gonna start painting on that layer mask with black. And let's see what starts to, uh, oh, uh, yeah, let's see what starts to happen here. Okay, as you see, it's just absolutely showing what's underneath. Now, if you pay attention, you'll notice that there's um, a difference in color between the background and the one I'm erasing, and that's because there's a genuine shadow there. We'll take care of that a little bit later on, but for right now, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to just erase this background here. 
get rid of that there. And then I'm going to move my uh, image a little bit higher and just work on the stool. So I'm going to work on the stool and get rid of all of the evidence of legs. And watch what happens right here. See where the it, it overlaps with the guitar? Well, the guitar really was there, and since I didn't move anything, including the strap, as I removed the um, the legs, you can then see what's right behind, which is the guitar strap. All right, I'm going to work on this for a little while and uh, remove uh, any evidence of the strap. So let me work on this here. All right, and for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to be as perfectionist as I normally am, um, but um, you can see that it removed it and it looks like I'm now floating. So I didn't do anything else. I'm also this time going to remove that thing right there. Let's see if that makes a difference if I just take this. Yeah. Okay, so I got rid of it. And again, it's a slightly different shade. Maybe the, maybe the color of the, um, the day changed or whatnot. Or maybe my white balance change is more, more like it but I'm just gonna try to blend that in there so it looks almost unnoticeable. So that remote's gone now, and that's what the picture looks like, all right? Now, the one thing that I do to, to make it look a little bit more natural, because if you look down here, and if you're really picky and, um, and, and, and careful, you can see that there's a slight discoloration on here. So what I'm gonna do is uh, increase my brush size um, so that, let's see, yeah increase my brush size and have it really feathered. And then I'm just gonna try to blend that in there. Am I on the right thing? Yes. Blend it in just as much as I can. And then here's the last thing. I'm gonna create a new layer right above this one here. And I am going to now um, paint right on that layer uh, with a slightly smaller brush size and with uh, pressure on and I'm going to paint a shadow right here so it kind of makes it look like there's a, there's a shadow underneath me. All right. And if that's too much, you can always reduce the opacity like this. If I reduce it a lot, you'll be able to see the change there. And I'll just put a little bit of a shadow so it doesn't so it looks like there's actually, you know, light coming from above and there's a shadow down here. So there you go. Uh, that is how you make a <laughs> Just fun stuff. This is how you make a, um, a floating object. Uh, one, there's several ways to do it, but this is one of the easiest ways, I think, is just to use a tripod. Um, you can get, I used a black stool, by the way, because black is a lot easier to hide. If this was a neon pink green stool, it'd be a little bit harder to hide. Black looks like a shadow. Um, and again, if I wanted to do this uh, to, sh to, to show it off, I would probably use um, a little bit, take a little more, more time and um, just make it a little bit more, because right now I can detect a little bit of that black stool on there and it just looks a little jaggy and stuff like that. But otherwise, if you don't draw attention to it and you can, uh, you can blur it a little bit, do a lot of little tricks in there to make it look um, real. But I didn't have to paste this picture into the scene. I really was in there, which is a huge advantage by the way, because the light and everything is consistent. The color of the light, uh, the intensity of the light, as well as the direction of the light is consistent. Um, so it's not like I was taking it, it took this photo at a different place on a green screen or anything like that. So there you go. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that was fun. And if you do one of these um, composites and get one of these floaties done, send them to me at sunny at pocketlenses.com. And uh, I'd love to see your work as well on um, doing something fun like this. All right, take care.